This is the Irish Maker Podcast, a show where we talk to makers, crafters, and builders from all over the island of Ireland. I'm your host, Nathan Wheeler, and let's jump right into the episode. Hello, makers. Today, we are talking to two guests from Dublin Maker, Tomas Ward and Jeffrey Rowe, who are going to tell us all about their upcoming events. Hey, folks, it's great to see you both. Hey, Nathan. Great to see you. Long time no see. I know, Thomas. It's been quite a while since we hung out. It's probably the last time I saw you was the last Dublin Maker. It was. It was indeed the last Dublin Maker. And what a impact you had. I know. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I kind of just hung around and kind of showed some stuff. And then I, I was surrounded by the most interesting people. And that's what I always find with Dublin Maker. There's always the most exciting people there. Nathan, you were very humble. You were very good. You were, you were one of the star attractions, I thought. You were very good. <laughs> stop, anyway. stop, stop. Jeffrey, it's great to see you too. Oh, yeah, great to be back on the show. Oh, it's great to have you here. I love your sign. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice uh, CNC sign by one of our makers at a, at a previous Dublin maker. Well, before we get stuck into that, I want to hear all our listeners to find out what is Dublin Maker. Talk to us like we're five and explain the event to us. Dublin Maker. It's a one day celebration of all things making happening in Ireland. We all come together, take over Marion Square and really showcase what Ireland has to offer. Think about it as your day out where you can go along, get your enthusiasm filled up to uh, to, to 11 and then be enthused, inspired, you know, create new ideas and dreams about how you can start your maker journey. And all that happens on 23rd of July this year. So Jeffrey came out there with the party line. Brilliant. That's the official line. The, the other reason, well, the other the other thing about Double Maker is that we just love um, hands-on making culture and we just indulge ourselves to some degree. Jeffrey, wasn't it fair to say that? In just oh, yeah. celebrating all the quirky, interesting, eclectic makers from all walks of life, from all with all sorts of stories and backgrounds. And we use the event as an excuse to pull them all into one place and have a look at the wonderful zoo of Irish making, right? So there's also that reason. <laughs> That's, I suppose, story by Dublin Maker. But what Jeffrey delivered there is the uh, the grant-winning, sponsor-winning <laughs> corporate line, right? But we also <laughs> do it just for the crack because it's great to see all these. Here's things. a line I produced earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I loved Dublin Maker. I've been to two Dublin Makers since I since I was activated as a maker. And I think I was there, the first time I was there was the last in-person event. And I was there with my all my costumes and stuff. And it was just incredible to see all these makers and all the incredible talent that was on display. I don't know if you remember the South African guy who'd made his own 3D printers out of scraps and bits of electronics. It oh, absolutely yeah, yeah. blew me away, the talent that, that was there. Yeah, so that's yeah. there. And where would you find, you see, without Double Maker, you wouldn't know that these sort of people exist and that... that it's great. It's an opportunity for people like that to kind of share their enthusiasm and passion for 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 what they might have thought as a bit of a niche interest. But, you know, they get to celebrate it and uh, it draws in all sorts of people that they probably and attention they didn't expect to get. So, yeah, he, he was fantastic. Yeah. So tell us the history of Dublin Maker. Am I right in thinking it's 10 years of Dublin Maker this year? Yeah. Do you know what? I was looking over old emails. That's the only preparation I did for this. <laughs> <laughs> but I, mean, no. I, have a, I have a terrible memory. So I'd go, why did, what were we doing? And uh, I was looking back, and Jeffrey, you're on all those original emails, uh, uh, which is great. Because you know, I was like, when did Jeffrey come in? And he was in there from the start. Um, it was, we, uh, we, Dublin was European City of Science in 2012, and the office of the Chief Scientific Officer of Ireland, there, were, there was some kind of a grant to try that the I suppose the country was trying to come up with, you know, we need events. If, if Dublin's going to be European City Science, we need something happening. And um, we had this idea of, um, you know, the, the maker movement became sort of, was kind of emerging in a sort of uh, a profiled way in the US in particular. And there was magazines like Make Magazine out. And, and there, was a, there was kind of a flurry of maker fairs in the US in particular. And we were aware of that through, you know, I suppose popular culture and magazines and stuff. And we said, well, maybe there's something we can do. And I had my, I personally had a, a university based makers club um, in uh, Maynooth and Jeffrey had 
Tog. Um, t- Tog was called t- no, it was called something different then, wasn't it, Jeff? No, no, we're called Tog, yeah. Oh, Tog from the get go. Um, and uh, we uh, we applied for funding, and um, we were surprisingly successful. I mean, we got five thousand euros. Which, Jeff, if you think about the cost of running Dublin Maker this year, for example, okay. we ran the first. Dublin Maker. It was called the Mini Maker Fair for budget. I think we had, including if it's a sponsorship, was it eight grand or ten or something like that? Tiny right? budget I mean, for a big event. That would, <laughs> wouldn't pay for tens. Uh, no, but uh, and we had great support in the early days from the Science Gallery in particular. I was looking at like Ian Brunswick was fantastic and Shauna Boyle and Alison and Sarah. Do you remember all them, Jeffrey? Yeah, we've had some great support over the years. Yeah, and uh, so that first event we ran in the physics lawn in Trinity. Uh, so it was very kind of them to give us that space because otherwise it was, you know, it was it's hard to find a good event space in Dub- Dublin that things haven't changed. And um, it just went on, you know, that event went really well. And the video is on YouTube if you check it up. Dublin Maker, um, sorry, it wasn't called Dublin Maker, the Dublin Mini Maker Fair 2012. And the event grew from there. But the, the same sort of feeling the event has got a style or a feel that's the only word i have for it that's been the sort of a it's been consistent would you agree jeffrey yeah i think it uh, kind of we from the get-go we're very uh, much wanted to make it a, a grassroots uh, event like originally it was tomas and uh, dr david McKeown who originally did the the funding uh, application for it and then i had known david uh, through the irish robotics club and uh, going to off to Vienna to uh, to put robots into competitions, and he knew I was involved in uh, in, in the makerspace tog, and he knew I had uh, exhibited at the UK Maker Fair, so he knew uh, I was involved in that sort of area. So they brought me uh, then on board to kind of bring in the kind of grassroots to ensure that it's not just uh, academic research uh, units or it's not just science outreach. We wanted to get that kind of ground level maker, tinkerer, someone in their back shed, uh, inventor sort of uh, vibe at the event. Yeah. Jeffrey, around that time, you used to run kind of make nights in the Science Gallery. Is that right? You and David? Yeah, we, we collaborated a few times with, uh, I'm sure everyone watching this knows, uh, Mitch Altman. We had him over uh, to do soldering workshops. We were kind of uh, tinkering back and forth in the mix of uh, science and art a lot in the science gallery myself and David at the time. Mm-hmm. And how did COVID affect the event? Because obviously the last one I remember was 2019, it would have been. So it's been, what, two years without, two, three years without an event? Yeah, do you know, yeah, uh, well, okay. You know, a big milestone for us just in the history of the event, and this leads up to your, this COVID conversation, that I was particularly proud of us all pulling together to do was when we, had our first event in Marion Square when we said, look, we are now truly the city's event, the community's event, people's event, you know, having it in public square like that was a big deal. And it, it, when, when you move to, when, the, when an event has that sort of scale and that sort of sort of community buy-in and sort of, you know, excitement and frizz, you know, of just people talking and walking around the place, the social aspect of it is, is something that you might have we would have taken for granted until COVID happened. And when COVID happened and the tents were taken off the square, if you like, and the parks went silent and the streets went silent and the the, the kind of the everyday humdrum banter of everyday life goes silent, you know, you really miss it. You really feel it. And mm-hmm. um COVID was was COVID was very damaging for the event, I thought, because you know we were all at the virtual event, but I personally feel personal opinion here, not the corporate line, if you like. Dublin Maker is a physical in-person event. It's hugs and high fives and show me that and can I take a look at this? It's okay if I stick my finger to that thing or whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, so COVID, it's the, it, it, it's, it, COVID is our nemesis. <laughs> it did not help us in any way. And the only positive thing I can say about it is that there was a, a sort of renaissance in people building and making things in their sheds or in their bedrooms or you know as people were looking for things to do you know but um i have to agree with you i have yeah. to agree with you there there's been so many people we've talked to even on the podcast in the last few months who just got into making and they've just produced some of the most incredible stuff 
um, literally in their sheds or in their bedrooms. Uh, and it's, it's really incredible. But there's nothing like sitting there in front of someone and actually seeing it and having them explain it and then seeing their passion. And that's what's a great thing about Dublin Maker. But tell me, uh, what sort of makers are we looking to see this year? Are we seeing anyone particularly exciting? Is, or can we get a hint of who's going to be at Dublin Maker this year? Well, of course, every maker is brilliant, you know, <laughs> and they all do great projects. You know, and we wouldn't like to single out any one maker above the other. But I guess we do have personal favorites. I have uh, certain bits of technology and stuff. Uh, that, that I'm interested in. So uh, I might say those ones rather than my particular <laughs> uh, my particular uh, favorite. Uh, so one that I really uh, like is, I'm sure Nathan has knows a lot about this. I like repairing things. I like reusing things. And uh, one of uh, the artists that we must have had at maybe six events so far, she is now creating uh, jewelry using coffee pots. So she made them in a show. She makes a, has her cup of coffee and then the discarded coffee pot. I see she, <coughs> excuse me, she's made earrings, necklaces, brooches, just the creativity in taking this disused item, garbage to some people and making, wow, breathtaking jewelry about it is, and I, and I don't wear jewelry, but I'm still excited about just the creativity, seeing the coffee pot as it is, as a discarded item, and then having the vision to suddenly turn it into a piece of jewelry is uh, it's just amazing. That sounds incredible. What about you, Tomas? Well, do you know what? Um, I, I, you, you, you sometimes can't judge a, a maker by their, by their, their pitch in the, uh, in the open call. Um, I'm reserving my judgment until I see them because sometimes you, you something will come in and it, the description might be fairly, mightn't be that exciting, but you might go, oh yeah, well, bring them in, who knows? And then they suddenly they turn up and they blow you away with with their either the charisma, their story, or even the thing they're making themselves that they might have undersold in terms of the original sort of presentation. So uh, there's there's we've um, for example. I think this year we've we've quite a number of exhibits in we've a number of exhibits in through Dublin City Council from the local enterprise office. So local little startups or local little enterprises and social enterprises in particular doing things like you know uh, recycled jewelry. Well, not uh, uh, kind of um, uh, jewelry making, um, um, uh, bicycle um, uh, bicycle customized bicycles and things like that. You know, there, there's there's some surprising there's some there are some exhibitors coming through that way that I'm excited to see what they've actually done, right? And how they've done it. And so I'll be reserving my judgment to the day. If you're really like the, maybe the more sci-fi side of things, um, Peter Redmond from Mechatrons will be there. And Peter does a lot of really world-class robotics. Like he does the Robo Wars, um, the uh, um, tournament that will be in Tala in October, I think. Um, awesome. uh, Ah, it's great. I love robots. Everybody loves robots. Everyone loves robots. <laughs> yeah, I mean, practically fighting robots, you know, big, very realistic and, you know, anim animatronics, mechatronics. And he's also got a, a, he'll have a five meter by five meter kind of racing track with AI driven um, donkey carts. Uh, Sounds awesome. Yeah, what did you say? It's, it's, it's cheap, right? Perfect. And just one final point there. Uh, Jeffrey, you mentioned a repair shop at Dublin Maker. What's that all about? Yeah, so what we're going to try out is a, a, it's something a little bit different. That we want to give people the opportunity to uh, bring along their their broken or damaged items, and it can be anything from like electronics to clothing to uh, a picture frame that needs to, or a vase that needs to be glued back together. And what we have is uh, it's a Tog hackerspace. They'll be running a repair cafe at it where people, as I said, can bring all sorts of items and we'll have expert repairers there. So we want to kind of, being green and sustainability uh, runs deep in the in the festival itself. And this is one of the ways that we thought that we could encourage that kind of circular economy, having that, giving thing, things a new lease of life. So repairing items before they go to, uh, they'll go to landfill or to recycle. So yeah, if anyone's watching this and they have something at the end of their wardrobe or something in that junk drawer that they need repaired, We'd love it if you could bring along and the folks 
down in uh, in Tog at the Repair Cafe uh, at the festival. We'll be able to repair it for you. Perfect. Oh, after you, Tomas. Right, Ned, I was going to say that's a great it's a great facility for us to have because lots of the makers, when they are they, you know at the event itself, some of their some of their exhibits break you know break on the day. So they're like, Jeffrey, you might you might 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 have a line. It's a nice feature that's to it. have at the festival. Perfect. And that's a great place to call it there. Thank you so much to my guests, guests Jeff and Tomas. You can find all the details of Dublin Maker down in the description. And that's it from us, makers. You keep making. <laughs> Thanks for having us. This has been the Irish Maker Podcast. I've been your host, Nathan Wheeler. This episode was engineered and mixed by Vicky Toomey Lee. Thank you to our sponsor, Cody Grace. Music provided by Gertie Beats. Follow the Irish Maker Podcast on social media at the Irish Maker Podcast. And if you're a maker or you know a maker who should be on this podcast, then send us an email at irishmakerpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. <laughs>